Right, good afternoon everybody. Hands up if you were in the audience last year. Okay, I'm getting, for those of you on the line who can't see, this is about half. Um, okay, so those of you who are in the audience last year will remember that this is the session that I chaired last year, and I thought it's interesting to start by looking at where are these projects now, one year down the line. Okay, uh, and so uh, we go to uh, project number one, which was uh, all about using unidentified, uh, no, unidentified, unmanned aerial vehicles, uh, in, uh, possibly unidentified as well, uh, in uh, Papua New Guinea to transport tuberculosis samples because the, the road journey and the sea journey is very complicated. Uh, and, uh, and so the answer for where we are there is that they've done one pilot last year and they're still in second pilot mode. And so that's where they're going back this year to do another pilot with new tech. Uh, and so some progress has been made, but in terms of impact on the beneficiaries, on the MSF beneficiaries, no perceived impact on MSF beneficiaries yet. These things sometimes take time. The second project, so this was presented by Jean-Yves Nutting, a Watson from OCB. He was talking about instead of uh, drilling a new borehole when you find a broken borehole in the field, he was talking about refreshing existing boreholes, diagnosing the problem by putting a camera down the borehole uh, and uh, trying to make repairs. And this has uh, had some more success and it's going actually to scale. And so this is beginning actually to have an impact on the beneficiaries with which you work. And in particular, he's, he's just recently done a fluoride study. That fluoride in the water, fluoride in the groundwater is an issue in Niger. And they've been able to do some really interesting analysis and make a difference uh, to, to people's lives in Niger. So that's project two. Project number three. Uh, so this was, uh, again, the problem which has been touched on earlier. This was transferring uh, patient data from inside the red zone of an Ebola treatment center outside to the nursing station. Uh, and uh, we uh, attacked this using a, a PDA, so that's a, a, a little handheld computer, which you can see in the photo. And we got as far as deploying it. Uh, we managed to go from uh, conception to deployment in two months, which is great. But uh, it failed. It failed forward. Uh, it failed because it made no significant, in fact, no difference at all uh, to uh, the outcome of any of the patients. Uh, and uh, I was personally responsible for this, uh, this project. And so I'm, I think it's important to be able to stand up and admit failure uh, and, and admit that I learned from that failure. And, and the big thing that I learned was not to send a Rob Marr to the field at the same time. Uh, I should have found a Rob. Uh, where are you, Rob? Uh, but really, there you are. And next time, you're going with that thing. Uh, and so we can learn from it. That's the idea. And, and to really nail this, uh, uh, so, that, so that's, yeah. We fail forward and we learn, and this is an important message to pass. Next project, fourth project, is the Ebola tablet. So again, we've discussed this already, it's been mentioned, and this was the same problem statement as the PDA, uh, but this time they had a different approach. And, uh, and just for those of you who comment, does MSF ever work together? Yes, we work very closely together, and we, were, we, we felt it was useful to work together, and both of us approached the problem from slightly different angles and see what the outcomes would be. Um, but once again, they uh, also, failed forward. Uh, they'd, uh, they deployed seven months too late, and by that time there were, the uh, Ebola epidemic was very much uh, less intense than it was before, and they learned. Uh, in fact, they failed forward twice, as Rob has just presented, <laughs> because <laughs> they took this tech and then tried to do something similar in, in Chad, uh, and this has been evaluated. I think, uh, uh, and so uh, I assume responsibility for, as project manager for the first problem, and I invite Aryan to assume responsibility. <laughs> He financed this second project, uh, and so really nail this down. Uh, uh, last night, I, uh, I made some T-shirts, uh, and so uh, we're going to strip in front of you here. <laughs> carry on, carry on. Uh, yeah, we're both well over 14. Married. And, uh, so, so, uh, and you can see I failed terribly, because I've even failed to spell the word failed. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Which is really very embarrassing. <laughs> and so I don't know if you can see this. <laughs> Uh, and so, uh, yeah, I think it's important because we have a culture sometimes within MSF of not necessarily tolerating the failure in the way that we should do. Uh, and uh, I'm not saying go out and fail. But I I'm saying go out, think hard about what you're doing, build your project correctly, try and fail forward if it doesn't work out the way you thought it did or you thought it would, uh, and learn from the experience. And thank you very much once again, Rob, for an excellent presentation on, on telling us how to do that. So uh, you get a round of applause just because it really uh, illustrates my point. Uh, and yet I go back to Albert Einstein, anybody who's never made a mistake has never tried anything new. Uh, and so I do encourage people uh, to, uh, to try new things, otherwise we're never going to get anywhere. 
Okay, doke. Um, uh, I'm going to give you some 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 advice. I've been uh, spent the last two years looking for good advice uh, for people uh, who, who are trying to be innovative with the NMSF movement. And and the best advice I found was this chap called Magnus Lindqvist, who's a, um, a Swedish chap. He's a futurist and a trend spotter. And he says, ignore the trends, look for the secrets. Uh, and this is the real key. Ignore what everybody's talking about, uh, the big latest thing, and look for the secrets. He says experiment, uh, and you've seen all four of the previous presenters have experimented, and those that are about to present have experimented as well. And don't be afraid to make enemies. Uh, I can assure you that one of the people, or at least two or three that are going to present this afternoon, have already made enemies. And this is actually quite a good thing. If you're making enemies, possibly you're doing the right thing, because you're, you're challenging a status quo. You're challenging a norm. You're using a word which uh, uh, somebody I admire greatly, Megan McGuire, she, uh, she's disrupting. You're, you're being disruptive. So experiment uh, and make enemies. And finally, be patient. And so, yeah, absolutely, I hear uh, the person who asked for eCare or, or the Vaxi app to be deployed tomorrow in the field. But unfortunately, these things do take time. Um, but there's a way we can get around that as well. Uh, and that's really the theme of this afternoon, is to uh, uh, get over this sickness that we have within MSF of trying to do hundreds of projects and doing them badly over a long periods of time, to scope down our portfolio to do few projects and do them well and do them quickly. And so what we've got this afternoon is um, four projects that are in a more of an embryonic stage uh, than uh, things that you've seen presented, certainly yesterday, and things that you've seen presented this afternoon. Uh, they've, they've, uh, they've tested things in the field. They've, they've, they've had some time to play, months rather than years. Uh, and essentially what they're doing is that they're coming to present where they are now and where they want to go. Uh, and to, to make it uh, uh, more interesting, I've, I've, pushed, um, uh, I've pushed them quite hard, actually. They have to deliver seven slides in seven minutes, and the, the slides are formatted. And they're not presenting to you, the audience. They're presenting to a panel. A panel uh, which, uh, for those of you who have seen Dragon's Den, this is a, a similar kind of concept. Uh, uh, and uh, the panel is made, well, I'll introduce them in a minute, but you'll see. And so they're going to present to the panel, and then the, you will vote, the audience, you get a chance to choose your favorite, well, your, the project that you think will have the highest impact on our beneficiaries, on MSF beneficiaries. The panel will choose, and the online audience will be able to choose via Twitter. And you can only choose one. You can only choose one because we can't resource everything. And by over-committing ourselves on projects, we, well, we've seen we, we, we don't succeed. We fail numerous projects as opposed to succeeding few. Succeeding few. Um, and I think uh, uh, so that's, uh, that's, the, that's, the, um, that's the innovation pitch. That's what we're coming to in a minute. But I'm going to pause for one minute just to talk about this. Uh, there was an excellent question last year during the session that I presented on the ethical principles for innovative uh, projects, projects that don't necessarily involve human participants or, or their data, <coughs> though some of these do, but there we go. And, and I think if you grow up with an MSF as a medic, uh, and if, you, yeah, if you've been trained as a medic, uh, ethical principles are part of your DNA. This is what we grow up with. But if you're not a medic like myself, this is something you have to learn, uh, and you need guidance. Uh, and so we've uh, designed a framework, which is in uh, the brochure, and we hope that it'll be published soon uh, in a peer review journal, and certainly within MSF, we've been starting to share it. And I, I won't go through the details, I'll just let you read it. Um, but I think it's important to give people like myself, people like those that are going to present, a framework to walk yourself through to see whether you're actually uh, uh, to take an ethics into consideration or not. And so th I thank the gentleman, whoever it was, I don't know who it was actually, who, who asked me that question last year. Uh, and, uh, and this is our, this is our reply, and, uh, and those who are presenting have applied this, this framework uh, to, uh, to their projects, and so we'll see how that goes. Um, and so here I've talked about this uh, uh, before. I think um, there's another thing to mention is that often when, when you have, everybody has good ideas in MSF all the time. Don't, don't be fooled by this creation of innovation units within the MSF movement. That's not where the innovation happens. The innovation units role is, is more to, to help ideators uh, bring their, their projects from outcome to fruition. Um, and, and I think most of the best ideas come from the people on the ground in the field. Um, but those ideators, um, often they'll, they'll just say, why don't we do it in blue? Uh, and they won't really think about uh, you know, the difference between doing it in blue instead of doing it in green and the costs involved uh, and the risks, et cetera. So I've encouraged them to actually present something called a business case. The first time I mentioned that word with an MSF, I got nailed to the wall. But I think it's, it's a useful term. It's you know, what's, what argue, solid arguments for why we're doing this. Uh, and uh, I encourage decision makers uh, to, to make decisions based on something more than just le feeling, as they say in French. Uh, because, uh, 
solid decision makers. And finally, you know, a competition played in good spirits is really it's a healthy thing for the organization. Uh, and so that's the reason for uh, today's innovation pitch.